She's won two Grammys, two CMA Awards for her songs, Humble and Kind, sung by Tim McGraw, and Girl Crush, of course, by Little Big Town. And while singer-songwriter Lori McKenna's sound is straight out of Nashville, her heart remains in her home of Stoughton, Massachusetts. She even has a whole album dedicated to the state. And now in her latest CD, out July 20th, The Tree, she's taking a long look at family, including a song dedicated to her 83-year-old father. Time is Lori McKenna joins me now. I love that song, Lori, Aww, by the way. thank you. Congratulations on the new thing. Thanks. How sick are you of people saying, Stoughton, Massachusetts? <laughs> you grew up there and you still live in Stoughton? How do you I deal do. with that? Um, well, I mean, I'm just used to it now, but I travel a lot, and... I um, I love Stoughton. I love it here. I I do fake a southern accent when I, was I travel. I'm so glad and you when said, I sing, I, I do. I didn't even know if you'd be upset if I said that to you, but obviously no, not. It's terrible. So what happened when, when I started recording my mm. songs? Somebody told me I didn't pronounce any of my R's, and I didn't know that before. Uh -huh. So in order to find them, I developed a slight southern accent. South so, Stoughton, as we all so know. It's I just tell, I tell there. people I'm south of Boston, and that's where I get my southern twang. So I was reading a review or an interview or something in Parade Magazine when your last CD came out, and you were asked to describe it, and you used one word, lush. So if I asked you to come up with a comparable word or two or three mm -hmm. about the tree, what is it? It's family. It's mm -hmm. um, the tree, the anchor of the record is People Get Old, but the, the, the title track, The Tree, is a song I wrote with Natalie Hemby and Aaron Retier, and it's about, you know, our families and sort of what they do for us and how they take care of us. Everybody there, humble and kind, obviously about the kids. You've mm -hmm. written a ton about your yeah. mother. When your father heard this, were you nervous? <laughs> when he, where did he hear it for the first time? So my, I've written, like you said, so many songs about my mom who passed away when I was little. Mm -hmm. But my dad was always just a harder subject because he's right there, and if you get it wrong, he, you know, he could tell you. So it was just always harder for me to get to that song. And when I finally did, unfortunately, the title was "People Get Old," and that's just how it wanted to be written. So I was a little nervous about sharing it with him. He um, came to a show I did in Situate, and I. He knew it was coming, and I, you know, had prepared him, and um, he he approves of the song. He approves it. He worked for Boston Edison for forty two years. That's great. So I had, you know, and it's just um, so that's what it all comes around. But were you nerd when you're when you're about? I mean, obviously your audience is huge, but probably the most audi important audience are your kids, your husband, yeah. your father. When he heard it for the first time, were you like saying, "Oh my God, what if he doesn't like it"? Or you I was a little, to be honest, I was a little nervous, but he's very supportive. My father's very, you know, sort of practical and honest and supportive um, and man of few words sometimes so sometimes you just want to hope for the right word <laughs> so so much of what you write about is sad I love sad music but everything I read about you is so unsad I know I'm so super happy <laughs> so, so seriously where's the dis where, where's where's the disconnect it's, where's that come from I finally figured it out it's um it's a couple of things it's um I like simple songs I like sad songs I like songs that make you think things um, but mostly I think it's my, it's my voice. The tone of my voice sounds sad, almost no matter what so I do with it. you write for your voice? Well, I think that's what I was doing. I don't, I don't think I realized I was doing that for a long time, but, you know, I could sing you Happy Birthday and it would sound depressing. So yeah. it's, it's my <laughs> voice. <laughs> Depends on what birthday it is, I guess, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, my friend Jack Ingram always says that he can make everything sound angry and I can make everything sound sad. But I do like sad songs. I like songs that make you feel things, especially things that you don't expect to feel. And make, you know, because we just run around. We're all so busy. We drive in our cars and we put something on. If it makes us think something that we didn't expect to think that day, that's my favorite. Where did Girl Crush come from? Oh, Girl Crush came from <laughs> a title. I had the title. I just wanted to write a song called Girl Crush. I told my friend Liz Rose one morning in the kitchen, and she said, what's that about? I said, I have no idea. And <laughs> Hillary Lindsay. you literally Lindsay, just started with a title with no melody no, or nothing? No, absolutely not. This is um, a perfect example of a genius co-writer. So I wrote that with Liz Rose and Hillary Lindsay. And I said, at 8.30 in the morning, we had an hour and a half to write a song and and I said, I want to write a song called Girl Crush. And Liz said, what's it about? 
And I said, I have no idea. I hadn't thought about it at all. Are you about to start playing? You can't, your fingers no, are getting very close. No, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. So Go. Hillary sits down. Hillary Lindsay, genius yeah. songwriter. Yeah. Um, and she was holding this guitar, not this one, but another guitar. And she just, she sang the first four lines. Just like that. I got a girl crush. I hate to admit it, but I got a heart rush. Ain't slowing down. I got it real bad. I want everything she has. That smile and that mean not left. She's giving you now. And then she looked at me and she said, you mean like that? <laughs> I swear to God. And I said, yeah, that's. And I looked at Liz and Liz was like, OK, let's do that. That was great. And the, she didn't know where it came from either. And then we just followed it. You have to follow the song sometimes. Do you have songwriting heroes? I have lots of songs. Like who? Here. Who are some that I might I know? I have from, you know, Bruce Springsteen and Tom Petty. Tom Petty, we always say, he always just said it. You know, mm -hmm. those um, to. You know, people around here, Mark Arelli mm -hmm. and the, the people that I came up with that are great. Mary Gaucher is one of the best songwriters in the world. Is there a song, is there one song you say, that's the one I wish I had written, but I didn't? Is there such a song? Oh, well, there's a lot of those, too. But if I just had one pick, mm -hmm. um, it would be I Can't Make You Love Me. Oh, yeah. Alan Shambling yeah. and Mike Reed wrote yes. that, and it's just the best. You know what they said? What? They said, I wish I had written Girl Crush. <laughs> You're terrific. Thank you so Thank much. You it is so great much to see you. Congratulations <laughs> on the new you. CD. We can't wait to see it. The Sorry. new album again is The Tree. It's out July 20th. And Lori will be kicking off her latest tour with a sold-out show on July 18th at the City Winery Boston. If you didn't make the cut for that performance, stick around till the end of the show to hear a little more.